Hello, and welcome to our virtual annual discipline specific activity for the 2021-22 school year. For those of you who do not know me, I am Kaylee Malsey, the Associate Dean of School Partnerships. Thank you for participating in our ACE annual discipline specific activity. As the pandemic continues to influence our yearly activities, we are pleased that we are able to still provide you with an opportunity to complete our NASEP required activities in a platform where you can make a connection to your liaison. Throughout the fall, ACE liaisons scheduled live Zoom sessions to discuss specific topics related to the disciplines in which you teach. While we understand that it is not always possible for you to attend the live sessions, these sessions were recorded so you can get the benefit of the event with the discussion from those who attended. Please enjoy the recording of your annual discipline specific activity. We hope next year we will be able to welcome you back to our campus for an in-person event. Thank you for your continued hard work in making this program available to students. I'm going to share, well, I'll share my screen with you guys in a minute. Uh, let's start off by doing uh, a, a welcome, uh, I guess. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Wade Symington, uh, the ACE faculty liaison for the mathematics department at Penn Highlands Community College. This is serving as our uh, annual uh, math discipline meeting. Uh, thanks again for, for coming in. Um, I guess as an introduction, I, uh, I'm on the math department here at, at Penn Highlands. Uh, I teach all the math classes I possibly can. I'll teach anything from the developmental stuff all the way up to the, the calculuses and the discrete maths. Uh, I teach mainly at Penn Highlands Blair campus, uh, but I also teach at the Huntington campus and the Richland campus. And really I go wherever they, they, they need me. Uh, never been one to shy away from traveling. Um, but that's a little bit about me. I, I, I know I've worked with a lot of you guys in the past. Those of you that are that are new to the ACE team or just new to me, I look forward to working with you. Thank you for being part of the team. Uh, we do have a great team here. Um, and uh, with that note, I think uh, I'd like to just go, if you guys could just uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves, you know, your name, obviously we all teach math, maybe like which, which math classes you teach, what school district you're from, and then if there's anything else you'd like to share with the group. Um, and uh, I'm just going to go in the order I have everyone over here. Jim, would you go first, please? Okay, my camera doesn't work. Uh, I taught at Somerset Junior Senior High School for 40 years. I taught everything from seventh grade to, to calculus. And I taught uh, college classes for a lot of different colleges. And currently, I'm teaching part-time at Somerset Christian School. I teach two or three periods a day. And I have the same three kids for all the classes which is college algebra and physics. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Paul, would you go next, please? I'm Paul Kieser. I teach at uh, Clearfield High School. I teach uh, trig or uh, pre-calculus and uh, calculus. Thank you, Paul. Um, Paula, would you go next, please? Hi, um, my name's Paula Rodkey, and this is my 21st year of teaching. In the middle there, I took some, somewhere in the middle. I took six years off for kids. I stayed home. So I'm getting older in the math world, I guess, of teaching high school, but it's great. Um, I taught at Juniata Valley. Then I taught at St. Joseph's Catholic Academy in Bullsburg, and now I'm back at Juniata Valley. So, yep. Great. And I've taught a variety of everything along the way in all those great. goals and years. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Uh, Alyssa, can we go to you next? We can kind of hear you. I heard something there. If you're having technical difficulties, though, we will obviously excuse you. I do still need to know your last name for the attendance purposes, though, Alyssa. I think I know which Alyssa it is, but and just if you could even just type it into the chat and send me send me that. Um, I think she's experiencing difficulties, though. Juliana, would you be so kind as to go next? Wait, did you see that the one person did text their last name? Oh, I see that now. Yeah, it was. It was the Alyssa I thought it was. Thanks, Alyssa. 
Juliana, we're not hearing you either. On what her mic icon is there. Well, I guess it wouldn't be a Zoom meeting if we didn't have some sort of technical difficulty. Uh, sorry, Juliana, but we're just not we're just not hearing you. Um, she teaches at Phillipsburg Osceola High School. She she posted in the chat. Thanks, Juliana. Uh, Tara, the last but not least, if you'd be so kind to. Sure, I I teach at Blacklick. I teach um, Algebra One A One B Trig Pre Calc and Calculus. Great. Oh, and Juliana mentioned in the chat she teaches Pre Calculus in the Consumer Math class classes. Great. Thank you, everybody, uh, for sharing that. Uh, that was the welcome and introductions part of the agenda. Uh, let me just pull up the agenda for tonight. I don't know if they sent this out to you guys. Here's what we have in store. I guess I better show my screen. There you go. Okay. Like I said, the welcome and introductions section is done. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, course content and delivery aspects. Uh, we'll talk about what the observations look like if you guys are getting observed this year. Uh, we'll talk about assessment. That's really going to be the big thing in the meeting is assessment. Um, I do want to talk about a little bit about things that are happening in our field. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about uh, the academic integrity concerns that are going on. Uh, and also, I just wanted to mention, uh, I, read, I read a really good uh, article uh, that I think came out in September that I'm going to recommend to all of you to read as well. And then we'll answer any questions and, and wrap things up. Um, I am going to, I'll try to keep my uh, eye on the chat throughout the, um, throughout the session, if, it, if I can. Uh, there it is. So if you guys have any questions, those of you that your mics weren't working, feel free to, to, to type those into the chat or, or just feel free to, to, to speak up if you guys have anything to say. Um, but let us, on that note, just run, just jump right into it. Okay. And I do have a PowerPoint that I will be sharing. All right. Um, so introductions, we've done that. Okay. Syllabi and textbooks next. All this course content and delivery, basically the agenda all over again. Sorry for the redundancy there. But uh, with regard to syllabi and textbooks, uh, you guys can get your syllabi on the My Peak page, uh, right? You go to the, the My Peak page, you sign in, you go to the ACE page, and then to the math page within the ACE page, and you'll be able to select your course and you'll be able to find uh, the most relevant syllabus there. Um, the syllabi are, are up to date. Um, and uh, that's, what I, that's what I had to say about that. And I, they also send them to you guys, I know, when you, when you sign up for the classes to teach them. Um, but that's where you can find them. Of course, if you can't find them on my peak, you can always shoot an email uh, to, to me and we can get you that syllabus really quickly. Uh, uh, and the, the textbooks for your courses are listed on the syllabus, syllabus for that course. Uh, if anyone would like a copy of their textbook and they don't have it, not a problem. Uh, let me know and I'll get the school to send you one. Um, also, I'm going to talk about my math lab here in a minute. And uh, if you have access to my math lab, you'll also have access to an ebook. Uh, so for some of you, if that's good enough, then then that's good enough. Um, but uh, do you guys, any of you out there in the Zoom, have questions on on the syllabi? You guys all have your syllabi, right? Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, good. I would hope so at this point, right? Uh, okay, one thing that's great that we have access to through through the college, through Penn Highlands is my math lab and my stat lab. I know some of us out there teach stats as well. Um, my math lab can give you guys access to PowerPoints, videos, animations, uh, section video lectures, tests, like a test bank. Um, my math lab and my stat lab are great resources for us as faculty members. Um, I would highly encourage all of you um, to get access to my, my math lab or, or, or my stat lab. Uh, if, if you don't yet have access to these things, uh, please feel free to let me know that you want access and I will reach out to our uh, Pearson rep and, and I'll get you set up. Um, but it's, it's definitely something I would really encourage you to take advantage of. 
uh, is, is this information in that my math lab. Uh, my stat lab, even as, especially um, if, if you teach statistics, uh, StatCrunch is the statistical software that comes with uh, out, out like my math lab. And uh, it is, uh, I think like the best uh, like elementary level stats software that I've, I've ever used. Uh, I think it's really user-friendly. So uh, two, two resources available for you folks. If you would like, you just gotta let me know. Uh, oh yeah, then that's what that's saying. Contact your liaison, that's me. Uh, also, we have resources listed on our MyPeak math page, uh, same location as your syllabus. Uh, on this, whoops, went too far ahead. On this page, it, depending on the course, we'll, we'll, di we'll di differ the content that's available, but I'll, I'll flip to MyPeak here really quick, right? So this is our MyPeak page, and if we just go to the, to the ACE tab up here, and if we go to the math tab over here, depending on the class you pick, I'm just gonna pick college algebra. That's a pretty common one uh, for our ACE team. Uh, and over here on the right-hand side, you guys are gonna see a bunch of resources. So, so there's some class notes there, there's some sample tests, there's some sample quizzes, some example exam reviews, uh, a lot of resources there. Uh, and that those resources are coming from uh, us, the faculty members here at Penn Highlands. Um, and actually, while I'm zoomed out here real quick, I'll show you guys. I want to show you the awesome stuff that that's in, in the My Math Lab. If you haven't seen this yet, so uh, I, I want to start out by saying My Math Lab for for you guys will look a little bit different than it will, what it looks to me. Uh, we have it integrated into our LMS, but uh, you folks out there, you'll have access to the same stuff. You just would have to go through like the MyMathLab.com site. But uh, the, my favorite thing about My Math Lab is they have they have this multimedia library where uh, that has all these awesome resources like I was telling you guys about like um, if I, I'm just going to pick a random section here and uh, we could see like all the resources and it differs for each book uh, the resources that are available but uh, even just looking at this I picked confidence intervals for the mean something I covered recently in my stats class there's uh, quiz prep videos. Uh, there's a there's a link to your ebook here, a section video lecture, a publisher PowerPoint, and even some some other resources here. So, uh, great teacher resources that, again, I can't encourage you enough to take advantage of. Um, that that's all I have for you folks in terms of resources that are available to you. Um, before I kind of shift gears and start heading into like talking about observations, assessment, expectations, all that stuff. You guys doing okay out there? Anybody have a question or anything? As of now, I'll check out the chat, which seems to disappear. I'm taking the silence as an all good then. All right. <clears throat> Expectations then gang, uh, just what we're expecting from you. Uh, really, we could sum it up in two or three words. Uh, the, the content that you cover has to be the content that's listed in those master syllabi that, uh, that you guys get when you start teaching your classes, um, right? Um, and even if you're using a different book than us, you know, it's all about the learning objectives. Uh, if you're teaching an ACE course, make sure you're hitting all the learning objectives for that course. That's the expectation as far as content goes. Um, as far as rigor goes, we want it to be at the college level. Uh, so, uh, you know, you, you guys are all high school teachers. So this is like the level of like, a, a, you know, an AP or a col college prep uh, level class is the level that we're looking for. Um, when it comes to grading, uh, I do want to mention that our syllabi and our department in general, we do not offer extra credit. Um, so I know some schools uh, require teachers to offer extra credit. I know some teachers just offer extra credit out of the goodness of their hearts as well. Um, but if that is the case, please keep two separate grade books, one grade book that is for, for Penn Highlands and one grade book that is, uh, you know, for, for, for you, for your class with the extra credit in there. Um, also, you know, in terms of uh, the balancing the grade book, if you look, if you look on the, the syllabi for the, for the classes that you're teaching, uh, a lot of those syllabi will have a grade breakdown of how uh, how much of the 
grade can be determined based on homework or how much of it has to be graded or determined based on in-class graded uh, exams, quizzes, et cetera. Most of our classes that break down, uh, we're looking for about 80% of the final grade to be determined by uh, closed note assessments, uh, quiz, quizzes and tests. Um, and the other 20% 20, 20 can, can be up to you. Um, but like I said, in three words, right? expectations, content, rigor, and grading. Uh, did I explain that well enough? Yes. Good. I got got one. Yes. Good. Okay. <laughs> Got. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about site visits because I know a couple of you in here have them coming up this year. Um, oh, I got my bullet points out of order. Well, the evaluation form after the observations over, right? I I, I fill out like a, a form, uh, and really we're just looking to see whether your class is consistent with the on class on campus version of the class. We're not looking to see. Uh, you know, or, or critique your, your teaching in any way. Although I will say I see lots of great teaching when I go out on these observations. It's definitely, uh, like, you know, a, a plus to it. Um, but uh, that evaluation form uh, that could, compares uh, your class to our on-campus version of the class uh, that will be typed up and sent to you within a week for you to sign uh, after the observation is completed. Um, this, uh, this semester, uh, we can conduct uh, these site visits in person or via Zoom. Uh, a lot of schools I know are hybrid or uh, totally online by now. Uh, if if you are on the on the schedule to be observed, I will work with you and we will we will make it happen whatever way we can um, for this semester. Uh, after they're done, uh, site visits are going to be done on a two to three year cycle. And uh, also, when I arrive for the site visit. Um, or when, you know, when the time comes for the site visit, if it's via Zoom, uh, please have a student sample sent to me, uh, either sent to me or, or to hand to me when I arrive. Um, we're looking for uh, an A grade sample, a C grade sample, and an F grade sample on these assessments. Uh, and they have to be A students. Uh, as far as the assessment goes, it could be any graded quiz, test, or homework. Um, the purpose of these student samples is to see, is, is to look at that rigor. Is, is the difficulty of this class um, uh, up to par with the on-campus version of, of the class as well? Um, so uh, you can redact student names on those. It doesn't have to be uh, student samples related to the common assessment question. It could be any assessment. Um, okay. Let's talk about assessment. This has changed. Uh, we changed our assessment procedure last year, and I don't think everybody got the note. So I'm going to try to like wave my hands and, and and say, you know, if you didn't submit assessment data to me last year, please do it this year. Uh, this is the thing that changed. Um, we used to only collect assessment data from you if you were observed. Uh, now what we're doing is we're getting assessment data from everyone, absolutely everyone that's in the, the the ACE faculty, that's in the ACE faculty. Um, so the common assessment information, it, how that works is you're gonna include the common question uh, for, for your course uh, as an open-ended question on an, on an exam or a quiz when that topic is taught, not as part of a final exam, but just at the appropriate time in that course. Um, and then you can re record the results uh, according to the grade, grading rubric on the Excel spreadsheet that um, you should all have. And uh, then you can send that back to me. Please send that back to me within a week of you administering that. Um, and that helps me keep track of this stuff throughout the semester rather than having to just do it all at, at the end of the semester. Um, but while I'm talking about this assessment document, I wanna show that to you guys. Um, uh, I know I sent out a massive email to all ACE faculty towards the beginning of the academic year that had this document in it. So everyone should have this, but if you need it, uh, feel free to shoot me an email or it's also available on my peak if, if you would like to get it there. But um, in this Word document, you can see each of our courses that are listed and the section, um, the, the associated section that your uh, assessment question is coming up in. And if we just look at this, let's pick Let's go to, back to like college algebra. You know, for this 
academic year, the assessment question for college algebra, it's a variation question. Right, here's your question. Here's your a worked out solution uh, along with a grading rubric. Um, and this rubric is what you will use to determine the scores that you put into this Excel spreadsheet. And right, I'm gonna just pick the Matt 145 page down here. And here's that page. And we could just put our student last names, the score here based off of the rubric and uh, put it in appropriate axis in the column is what this particular spreadsheet looks like. Uh, everyone might be a little bit different depending on the question and who the course owner was that made it. But for the most part, all of these reporting spreadsheets, put the student's last name in, put a numeric score in, mark, mark the components that they got right. And uh, this you could just attach it to an email and send it back to me. Okay. Wade. Yes. You have a question in the chat. That's great. I was hoping I would get some questions. I, are they the same? Uh, Juliana, thank you for asking that. Most of them, no. Uh, I want to say Matt 131 has stayed the same, but I think most of the other ones have changed. So um, let, let me send that to you after the meeting then, Juliana. I can do that, no problem. Not a problem. Also, um, I guess while I have this screen capture going on, I can show where am I going here? Ace. It should be available. I'm pretty sure I put it online. Yeah, both of them are right here in the on the ace on the my peak ace math page. You can get those both right here. Um, and and I do want to point out these are for the whole entire academic year. These won't be changing next semester. So um, you, those, those of you that maybe teach a class that in the past, maybe you've had to wait until the spring for us to change the question, not, not going to be an issue this year. This is our whole academic year of questions and reporting there. A any other questions that I could take care of for you folks before we push on? All right, let's see where I'm going next. Oh yes, it's time to talk about research and development in the field. Um, in this regard, there's two things I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, first of all, this is something that I, I'd like to hear from you guys if, if you're willing to speak about it, um, you know, how your school has been handling uh, the academic integrity issue, right? Ever since um, we, we moved online last March, uh, academic dishonesty has increased, um, you know, and like uh, websites like Chegg um, saw their traffic increase by like two or three hundred percent during the during the pandemic. Um, so again, I'd, I'd like to hear what you guys at your schools are doing to maybe try to mitigate this. Um, you know, hopefully we're all aware that this is definitely a concern. Um, I uh, I would just wanted to share a couple a couple things. A couple easy things that we can do um, are use custom questions if possible. If we're getting a lot of our questions from from test banks, those have already all been Googled and they, they can be they can be found in, in a matter of seconds. Um, so if possible, you use custom questions with your students, even do uh, with some tests, maybe do a version A and a version B. Um, that have that have slightly different different problems on there, but uh, this is one thing that I, I've, I've heard uh, really helps and it um, deter that academic uh, d dishonesty. Uh, another thing uh, that's, that's obvious is use proctoring services if possible. Um, I know not all schools have this available to them. Uh, at Penn Highlands, what we're doing because we don't, the proctoring service that we have at Penn Highlands doesn't work uh, with our um, like le learning management system very well, at least not with the my math lab within the learning management system. Uh, a lot of what us on the faculty are doing is uh, we're doing Zoom meetings during our exams and we're having our students take the exam, uh, really like sitting at their table, like like I am here 
uh, talk, talking, talking to you, you know, we uh, get the students to come into class a minute or two early, show us their workspace so that it's, it's you know, free of, uh, you know, cheating materials. And then uh, they take the exam during class time with, with the rest of the class, but, you know, they could be observed through the webcam. So we know that we're not there uh, Googling their answers. And then we just have the students snap a picture of the, of their scratch work with their phone and, and send it to us uh, either via email or, or, or through our LMS. Um, I, I've been doing this. I know uh, a couple other faculty members in the math department that have been doing this and it really has um, helped mitigate that, um, that academic dishonesty. Um, it, any, does anyone out there have anything they'd like to share on this note? Any words of wisdom or advice or have you encountered this? It might be overkill, but I have my pre-calc students and my calculus students uh, use a phone to zoom in and I make them put their phone like on their desk in such a way that I can see them working and their desk just like we're in school. And then um, they're watching their, ex they use their exam, their Chromebook to actually read the exam. So I can see everything. Yeah. That's, that's perfect. That's almost like right in line with almost like kind of what we're, what we're doing here is, you know, we get, if a student has a, however they zoom in on a laptop or on, on their phone or whatever, yeah, then we can watch their, uh, you know, watch them take the exam. Just being our own proctors. All right, gang. So you, did you see the two other people wanted that email also? Oh no, let me let me let me get that. This chat keeps disappearing. Jim Patton, we'll get you, Jim. Interesting. Okay. I I make the kids sign an integrity statement when we're virtual. Um, I I have some of mine do that too. Um, so but I well I do that for all of my classes. I do I have them sign what's called a I call it a classroom ethics contract. Um, and I will say like I, with my students, I, I really haven't seen this issue, but we know what's going on. We know what's going on. Uh, right. It's happening out there. Um, I think like if you, anytime we can grade work and steps that helps too, because it's easier for them to just get the answers. It's harder for them to, to get all of the correct work and show all of their correct steps. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of time. Multiple, yeah, like multiple component questions. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Trying to, trying to make unique questions, combining different topics can help too. Um, but we're in person most of the time. So most right. of the time. Yeah, so yeah, if you're in person, then this isn't even an issue for you. With I know Most of the time, but like we go virtual temporarily. And so then as a reminder at the top of each of their assessments i have them sign an integrity statement stating what i what i expect from them to do and we talked about it in class too because i, I we talk about character and integrity and mm -hmm. what it means to be a person of integrity and why does that even matter um you know you seeking an unfair advantage over someone i think it's good for them just to be reminded that it's important to you and yeah. if you have a good relationship with them too, that means something to some of them like that, you know, yeah, it's not absolutely. gonna, it's and not not gonna deter of... it for everyone. So it's not gonna stop it for everyone, but I've already caught nine cheaters so far this year, not in this class, but in different, in a variety of classes. Mm -hmm. And um, to, I had, I emailed their parents. I know you can't do that in uh, college. Yeah, yeah but, um, indeed. You can't, but we can. and. That, that meant something to some of them when their parents got <laughs> emails Good. about it. And so it was, it was, it's I don't know. Fun. Yeah, it's I, fun. I would just say like, it's never fun. It takes me so much longer to do this. Honestly, this is so, so time consuming to make it, make sure it's, um, yeah, I guess, you know, more, um, fair to the kids, like, so to help prevent cheaters but to make sure it's more, you know, above board, it takes a lot more work, unfortunately. I think we can all agree on that. Um, and you even like touched on the last thing that I wanted to, 
I even wanted to mention about this whole academic integrity thing is that, you know, um, let's remember that, you know, our students, for the most part, in general, uh, they're, they're, they only use cheating as a last resort. They only go to, down that road when they really feel like there's no other option, um, that, that they're, they're rather hopeless, you could say. But um, so on that, for that reason, you know, and I know it's tough times like this if we're working remotely or, or whatever, but the more available that we are to our students, uh, the less likely they're going to be the cheat. Uh, and this even relates to the, the idea of, you know, if in our classrooms we can do some, some team building, um, then it, it's, it might not even be anything we have to worry about at all. But thank you for sharing. And I'm gonna, oh, this is, this is the, the last thing I wanted to show you guys. Check this out. Uh, so I, I don't know if any of you saw this. I want to say this came out in September. I'm going to, um, the, the article, it's a scientific, I, it's on the verge of math and science. Uh, the name of it is reversible, reversible dynamics with closed timeline curves and freedom of choice. Uh, here's our, the authors, and this should be uh, citation information enough for you to look it up. Uh, if you would like, um, it is, it is a techno, you know, a technical, uh, mathematical paper. Uh, it's not super duper long. I want to say it's only like 15 pages, but, um, it is, uh, this is a great, this is a great paper. I don't know if any of you, uh, are familiar with this or not, but, uh, at the risk of oversimplifying this, uh, like they, the, these mathematicians found certain instances where uh, time travel can, exi can exist paradox-free. Like you, I'm sure we're all familiar with the grandfather paradox, right? Like you, time travel is impossible, right? Um, but uh, and again, at the risk of oversimplifying it, they found uh, certain conditions under which uh, you could travel back in time and have uh, free will, freedom of choice. Uh, I thought this was awesome. This, and, and I actually like sat down and then tore through the scientific paper. Uh, the math's in there, it really isn't too hard to follow if you guys wanna check that out. Uh, it's the, the language that'll take you a, a minute to get your head around. Um, but uh, I felt like this would be a good thing to mention now because uh, Everybody and everyone everywhere is going stressed out, going going crazy. We're all working really hard, uh, but I just want to remind you guys: uh, mathematics is still the best discipline ever because we just prove time travel. So I, I get I get really excited about this. I am a through and through math nerd, so uh, I, uh, I I just want to share you. Please read that. Please check it out. I, um, but. The last thing I have to say, not that was the last thing I have to say. Let me throw up this contact information so that way it gets caught on the on the screen capture. Here you go, my email. Uh, this is my office phone number, but you can call me or text me at that number, and I'm always happy to to help you, Ace faculty, if you guys need anything. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop sharing that there. Uh, so I've got a couple of documents to send out to you guys. I'll have that done in no time. Uh, can I answer any other questions? Can I do anything else for you fine folks while I have you here? I have a question on grading, Wade. Yes. Uh, is it still Penn Highlands policy not to accept late work? When you talked about keeping two sets of books to have one set for the Penn Highlands grade and one set for the homeschool, uh, I, it used to be no late work for the Penn Highlands grade, right? Is that yeah, I'm, yeah, you're, you're you're right about that. Yeah, um, and I'm if, I'm sorry. This well, for this year, I'm having a good. There. I'm having uh, a good amount of kids that are turning in late work. Almost over half their homework is getting turned in late, and they're using. We're on an alternating A B schedule. They're using that alternating schedule as an excuse, and I have no problem. You know, my principal tells me I have to let them turn in late work for at least half credit. I got no problem with that. When it comes to Penn Islands. They should be held to that higher standard, and I want to give them zero. Paul, what I what I do in my own classes is I take um, I we do all our stuff through my math lab, right? So it's all computerized. But um, I uh, let my students turn in their homework up to a week late on my math lab for a um, for half credit. Um, I 
don't let any student take up, make up any quiz or any test unless they reach out to me that day. I only let them make up one quiz and I let them make up one test a semester. Um, and I keep, you know, I keep track of it to make sure they only do one. Um, the, the big thing with that language in the syllabi that, I, that you're referring to, Paul, there is we don't, we want to avoid uh, saying yes to the student that says, hey, I did really bad on that exam. Can I take that again? Like, we're not going to re-administer an assessment like that. If you want to accept homework up to a week late for half credit, I leave that, I leave that decision up to you. And I'm okay with that being reflected in the Penn Highlands gradebook uh, as, as well. Did I, did I answer that well enough? Satisfactory? Yeah, yeah that's enough? fine. Uh, Paula, who's asking, would I be able to get my math lab? Absolutely. Uh, would it, does anybody else here need access to my math lab? I'll, I'll be happy to get that list going right now. And if, if you're out there watching this later, just email me if you want it. Juliana, gotcha. And the rest of you, I, I, I think I already have it. All right, my, all right, my coworkers, colleagues, um, I have no, nothing else to talk about. If you guys don't have anything else you'd like to say, we can call it a night here. Thank you. It was my pleasure. I hope next year to, to get to see all of you in, in person. Uh, until then, don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. I'm at your service. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thank Wayne. You. Thanks, guys.